M-O-D-E-L-Y, because I gotta. The Model Y is Tesla's latest vehicle to their all-electric lineup, and many people think it will quickly become the most successful, best-selling Tesla ever. Well, after becoming a Tesla owner myself in 2018, I've helped thousands of people make the decision of whether to buy a Tesla or not. And in this video, I'll share my full in-depth review of the Model Y so you can find out if it actually lives up to the hype. Now, Tesla says the Model Y is a fully electric mid-sized sport utility vehicle, but it can also be considered a compact crossover because it's based on the same platform of Tesla's cheaper Model 3 sedan and shares about 75% of the same parts, with the biggest differences being Model Y's bigger cargo space and a powered liftgate hatchback instead of a manual trunk. Now, this particular Model Y is a midnight silver long-range all-wheel drive with 20-inch induction wheels, five-seat black interior, and basic autopilot. Now, the the total cost after sales tax was right around $60,000, so as you can see from its price tag, the Model Y is considered a luxury vehicle. But is it worth that much money? Let's find out. Now when's the last time you ordered something online? Probably very recently, right? Well, when ordering a Tesla, it's no different. It's all done online. There's no haggling with dealerships. You can literally configure your Tesla and pay your deposit all from your smartphone and then end up with a car within a few weeks, which is pretty amazing. Now let's hop on the Tesla screen and quickly go over the configuration and pricing. Now the Model Y currently comes in two versions, both of which are dual motor all wheel drive. First is the long range starting at $54,000 and then the performance starting at $62,000. And those prices do include the required $1,200 delivery fee. Now both of those versions have about 315 miles of estimated range, but the performance has an optional upgrade package that reduces the range to 280 miles. The standard range Model Y will be the cheapest version at around $40,000 and is expected in early 2021 with an estimated range of 230 miles. Now, the base color that's included is pearl white, but you can choose to upgrade the paint to black, midnight silver, blue, or red. Now, the standard wheels are 19 inch Gemini wheels, but there are also options to upgrade to 20 inch induction wheels or the 21 inch Uber turbine wheels with the performance upgrade package. A tow hitch can be added for $1,000 and the five seat interior comes in a base color of black, but can be upgraded to white for $1,000. The seven seat interior option coming in 2021 will cost $3,000. An autopilot is included on all new Teslas, but the full self-driving option currently costs $8,000 and will continue to increase according to Elon. Now, if you do decide to order a Tesla online, you can click here or in the description below to use my referral link, and that will give you 1,000 free supercharging miles. Now, when taking delivery of the car, Tesla has an option called Express Delivery, which is basically a touchless process where all your paperwork is in the car ready for you to sign. When you show up, all you have to do is accept delivery and sign the paperwork, then you're ready to go. Now, overall, Tesla's online order process and touchless delivery is the most modern way of buying a car, and I wouldn't be surprised if this becomes the standard in the future. Now, speaking of the future, once you experience a Tesla, you'll quickly realize they have set the bar for what is expected out of a car in the 21st century. Now, when I first saw the Model Y, I honestly wasn't a big fan of the way it looked externally. It seemed like a plump Model 3, but the more I saw it, the more I appreciated the design. Of course, the front of the Model Y doesn't have a grill because there is no engine since it's all electric. It has a beautiful panoramic all glass roof, which gives a great view for anyone inside the car while still doing a decent job of keeping most of the heat and brightness from the sun at a comfortable level. The roof and back windows all come tinted with built-in UV protection, which is nice. Now, all Model Ys come standard with black trim and door handles, which is a noticeable difference from the Model 3, which has chrome trim. Now, I'm not sure why Tesla decided to do this, but since I know that a lot of Model 3 owners paid extra to do a chrome delete, maybe this is something most people prefer. Now, one other thing I wish they would have matte blacked out and taken some cues from MKBHD to matte black everything is the interior console, which is still that glossy piano black, which I hate. It's a fingerprint and dust magnet. I wish they would have uh, made that matte black as well. But for now, I guess you can just keep on getting the center console wraps, which I will leave a link to in the description below. Model Y also has LED fog lamps and power folding heated side mirrors, which actually seem a bit larger compared to the Model 3 side mirrors. Now, the Model Y doesn't come with a key or even a key fob. Instead, it comes with a key card, which can be held up to the B pillar to lock and unlock the car and can be set on the console to drive the car. However, the key card is just the backup method. The main way to lock, unlock, and drive the Model Y is with your smartphone. The mobile app is one of the best features of owning a Tesla. When your smartphone is set up as your main key, as long as you have your smartphone with you and Bluetooth enabled, the Model Y will automatically unlock as you walk up to it, 
and automatically be ready to drive when you sit in the driver's seat, and it will automatically lock when you walk away. And since all Teslas have built-in LTE and are always connected to the internet, you can use the Tesla app to control the Model Y from wherever you are. Some of the things you can see from the app include the current estimated battery range, the exact GPS location, how fast it's traveling if someone else is driving it, the current temperature inside the cabin, and it also has various controls including locking and unlocking the car, turning the climate control on or off, venting and closing all four windows, opening and closing the power hatchback, and opening the front trunk. Now one really cool app feature is the ability to enable keyless driving from anywhere. This is really useful if you're away from the car and you need to let someone drive the car temporarily. Now the Model Y premium interior includes a beautiful 15 inch touchscreen display that controls nearly all aspects of the car, 12 way power adjustable front and rear heated seats, premium audio consisting of 14 speakers, one subwoofer, two amps and immersive sound that sounds incredible. One of the best factory sound systems I've ever heard in a car. The vegan leather seats are the same as the Model 3 and are extremely comfortable. The steering wheel is also made of vegan leather and feels really nice. The center console has an ample amount of storage along with four USB ports and two smartphone docks that provide Qi wireless charging and it even charges my phone without having to remove my case, which is nice. Now, the back of the console also provides two USB-C ports so backseat passengers can charge their devices. The visors have built-in magnetic covers that reveal a mirror with automatic lights, and there are built-in coat hangers with ambient lights, along with two 12-volt sockets, one in the center console and one in the very back. Now, the brain of the Model Y, and a big advantage over its competitors, is the 15-inch touchscreen display. This will become your best friend when driving the Model Y because nearly everything you need to do can be controlled from the touchscreen. A Tesla has made the layout very user friendly by putting the live view of the car on the left side along with the speedometer and estimated battery range remaining. The majority of the screen shows a giant view of live GPS navigation that is based on Google Maps. The bottom menu bar has easy to use buttons to quickly access common controls for the car and we'll dive deeper into the software later in this video. But now let's talk about one of the best features of the Model Y that separates it from the Model 3, the size and larger cargo space for storage and seating inside the vehicle. Model Y dimensions are slightly larger than the Model 3 in all aspects, approximately 2 inches longer, 3 inches wider, and 7 inches taller with a ground clearance of about 6.5 inches. However, Tesla's website is a little misleading when it comes to cargo volume because Tesla lists Model Y cargo volume at 68 cubic feet and they list the Model 3 cargo volume at 15 cubic feet. That makes it sound like the Model Y has over four times as much storage space. However, that's an unequal comparison because the Model 3's 15 cubic feet is only accounting for the trunk, while the Model Y's 68 cubic feet is its absolute maximum of all storage locations with the seats folded down. If you use those same measurements of all storage locations with seats folded down for the Model 3, then the max cargo volume actually comes to about 43 cubic feet, which means Model Y only has about one third more cargo volume compared to the Model 3. Now, even though they are closer than Tesla makes it sound, the Model Y is still clearly the better option for storage and seating. The front trunk, or frunk as we like to call it, is bigger and deeper than the Model 3's frunk, which is great because I use the frunk way more than the trunk during my normal daily driving. It's perfect for groceries or storing things that you need quick access to if the back is full. Now, the powered liftgate hatchback is absolutely one of Model Y's most useful features. Since it's automatic, you can open and close it multiple different ways. You can press the button on the back and it automatically raises. Then you can press the close button to automatically close it. You can also open and close it from the Model Y's touchscreen display and, of course, from the mobile app. Now, I'm about 6'4", so the hatchback opening at its tallest is just a little bit shorter than me, so if you're tall, you still need to be careful about hitting your head, but it's tall enough for most people. I do wish the frunk was powered as well so you could close it automatically, like you can close the hatchback, but unfortunately, you have to manually close the frunk. Now, the back of the Model Y offers a huge amount of storage, including two undercarriage areas, one of which is quite deep and useful, but the other is pretty shallow and is only suitable for certain sized objects. Now, there are two side storage areas that are handy as well. Now, even though the back already provides a good amount of storage space, the automatic seat folder buttons quickly give you an even bigger storage area, which is a game changer compared to the Model 3. Now, this makes hauling and carrying certain items that are too big for a car without a hatchback a possibility in the Model Y. It also makes for a great Tesla to camp in. Like I said, I'm pretty tall and even I can fit fairly comfortably lying down in the back of the Model Y. So that paired with the romance mode, 
perfect date night. Now, even though I love that the seats fold down, I have some small complaints. First, the seats are heavy, and when you use the automatic folding buttons, the seats slam down pretty hard. It's quite jarring when you first experience it, so please, please, if you have a Model Y, make sure there isn't a small human or animal in the seat when you use the automatic folding buttons because that could cause some damage. And like I said, the seats are pretty heavy, so be careful. Now, I love how you can manually fold down the middle seat in case you have backseat passengers but also need to haul some long items like skis or pieces of wood, but when the middle seat is folded down, it leaves this small metal bar poking out of the back of the seat which is kind of weird. I would think there must be a better way to design that, but Tesla decided that that was the best way to do that. Now we know the seven seat option is coming in 2021, which will add two more seats in the back area of the Model Y. And I just don't know how those seats will be able to hold anyone bigger than a small child. I just don't know how it will fit adults like they claim it will. And with those two additional seats, it's going to leave much less room in the very back, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Other than the large storage space, the other notable difference compared to Model 3 is the height of the Model Y. The seats sit up about six inches higher than the Model 3, and this gives a much higher vantage point when you're sitting in the car looking out the windshield. Now, some people love sitting up higher when they're driving, which is definitely what you get with the Model Y, and that paired with the low dash gives a nice commanding view for driving. It's also much easier to get in and out of, at least for me anyway. My Model 3 sits really close to the ground, and with the Model Y, it seems to be the perfect height for me to just seamlessly get in and out of the vehicle from any of the seats. Now, the ride height is a great feature for people who struggle with low sitting cars. Not only is it easier to get in and out of, there's more leg room in the Model Y in all seats from what I could tell. Driving the Model Y resulted in less stiffness in my hips and legs due to the slightly larger leg room, and even a tall person like myself can sit comfortably in the back seats with plenty of headroom and enough leg room as well. Now, although sitting in the back seat of the Model Y is much more comfortable than the Model 3, the other advantage of the Model Y back seats is to be able to lean the seat back. However, when I did that, my head hit the crossbar and basically negated the advantage of being able to recline the seat at all. It's probably fine for most people, but I still wanted to point that out. Now, also, the middle back seat is super stiff and uncomfortable compared to the other seats. For most people, it definitely won't feel good to sit in that for a long period of time. However, I do like how the seat belt fasteners are tucked away and hidden in little pockets in the seats. Now, one negative thing I noticed is that the Model Y doors, especially the driver door, needs to be shut with a good amount of force compared to my Model 3. It almost felt like I had to slam the door to get it to shut all the way. I'm not sure if this is unique to this Model Y, so if you're a Model Y owner, let me know if you experienced this. Now, the good news is the touchscreen display and also the mobile app will show you if a door is left open. Now, let's talk about the most fun part of the Model Y, the driving experience. Now, just like with all other Teslas, the Model Y is an absolute joy to drive. It is blissfully quiet at stops and low speeds due to the lack of an engine, and even at faster speeds, it's still quieter than most gasoline vehicles. No rattling parts under the hood, just an ever so faint sound from the electric motors in the front and the back. Now, these motors are where Tesla's signature breathtaking quickness come from. The Tesla Model Y all-wheel drive versions feature two independent motors for improved redundancy, each with only one moving part. Unlike traditional all-wheel drive systems, the Tesla Model Y digitally controls torque to the front and rear wheels for better handling and traction control. And when you hit that accelerator pedal, the instant torque will literally put a smile on your face. The long range all wheel drive has a zero to 60 speed of 4.8 seconds. And the performance Model Y is even quicker at a mind blowing 3.5 seconds. Not only is it fun, but it's actually really useful in driving situations like merging or passing and it does it effortlessly, which is the beauty of driving a powerful all-electric vehicle. It's just an unreal performance for a car. Now, when you transition to an all-electric vehicle like the Model Y, after driving a gasoline vehicle your entire life, there are some things you must get used to. First, regenerative braking, which allows the Model Y to come to a stop without needing to press the brake pedal at all. If you're driving and you lift off of the accelerator pedal, the car will actually start to brake automatically by itself and will come to a complete stop. This is referred to as regen, and this captures the vehicle's kinetic energy and converts it into chemical energy that goes into the battery, where it can be used later as energy to drive the vehicle. Now, this introduces you to a whole new wonderful side of driving that you will never get with a gasoline vehicle. Not only does it allow you to basically just use one pedal for the majority of driving, but it also improves your driving efficiency and thus maximizes the battery range. So when it comes to driving a fully electric vehicle like the Model Y, maximizing range is kind of a big deal. You don't want to be stranded somewhere with a dead battery, right? 
Well, luckily, Teslas have the best battery technology out of all the current car manufacturers. The long range Model Y has an estimated range of 316 miles on a full charge, which can definitely come in handy during long trips. However, the estimated range is based on many different variables, like mainly driving speed, weather conditions, elevation, load capacity, and the use of air conditioning or heater. Like with all Teslas, the driving efficiency is shown on the Model Y touchscreen in the form of watt hours per mile, meaning how many watt hours it's using on average to travel one mile. Now for the first 600 miles traveled, this Model Y averaged 287 watt hours per mile. Now this is about 40 more watt hours per mile than my Model 3, which means the Model Y requires more energy than the Model 3 to travel the same distance. This is expected because the Model Y is bigger and heavier than the Model 3. However, the Model Y has a secret advantage over the Model 3 to help with the efficiency, a heat pump. I did an entire video about this, which I'll link to at the end of this video, but basically this should allow the Model Y to be at least slightly more efficient in colder temperatures than the Model 3. Now, since it's still summer right now, we must wait a few more months to test this out. So be sure to subscribe to see my video about that later on when I release it. But for now, until we see the standard range Model Y, the Model 3 is still the most efficient Tesla you can get. Now, many people don't realize that when you get an electric vehicle, most of your charging is done at home while you sleep. No more stopping at gas stations is such a huge benefit of getting a Tesla. Now, the Model Y comes with a 20 foot long mobile connector that can charge on a standard 120 volt household outlet. Now, for my test, the Model Y charged at a rate of four miles of range per hour of charge when using a normal outlet. This means the Model Y can recoup about 50 miles of range overnight, assuming it's charging for 12 hours. So if you drive 50 miles or less during your normal daily driving, that should be fine. However, if you need to charge at a faster rate, you can get a NEMA 1450 outlet installed and buy the $35 adapter from Tesla and get about 30 miles of range per hour of charge, which means you could technically charge from zero to 100% overnight. And Tesla makes automatic charging incredibly easy. You can set a charging limit on your Tesla, which they recommend charging to 90% for daily driving, and you can set it to automatically start charging at a certain time, or you can even set a scheduled departure time, which will make the car end its charging right before your departure time, which is extremely useful in the winter when your battery and cabin can be already warmed by the time you're ready to leave. But what about road trips? Well, that's when Tesla's secret weapon comes into play, the supercharger network. Tesla superchargers are like fuel stations for Teslas when you're traveling long distances. Right now, there are almost 2,000 Tesla supercharger stations strategically placed along major highways, and since these are considered DC fast charging stations, ideally, you should be able to spend no more than 30 minutes charging your Tesla at a supercharger until you're charged up enough to hit the road again. Now, Model Y is considered pay per use, so it will cost money to supercharge, and the price depends on the supercharger location, but it's still much cheaper than average gas prices. And when you're on a trip and you have an address entered into the touchscreen, it will tell you exactly where you need to stop for each supercharger stop along the way. It will guide you to them and it will tell you the estimated time at each supercharger station that you need to charge for. That alone is an incredibly useful feature when traveling in a Tesla. And one amazing benefit of the Model Y is its compatibility with Tesla's newest V3 superchargers that can charge at rates up to 1,000 miles of range per hour of charge, which is insanely fast. Tesla predicts the typical charging time at a V3 supercharger will drop to around 15 minutes, which is definitely needed because with more and more Teslas hitting the road, superchargers are becoming more crowded. In fact, two years ago when I got my Model 3, it was quite rare to see most of the supercharger stalls being used in my city of Louisville, Kentucky. Now, when I went there to film an example of supercharging in the Model Y, it was completely full and there were three Teslas waiting in line, which is very uncommon in this part of the country where Teslas aren't as popular as big metro areas in the West Coast. So hopefully this won't become a big problem if Tesla can expedite the installs of V3 superchargers and if Tesla owners don't abuse the superchargers and only use them during long road trips if they can charge at home. Now, driving the Model Y feels really good. It's a very comfortable ride, and other than the higher seat position, the driving experience is nearly identical to the Model 3, which is a good thing. Driving a Model Y felt like I was floating in a Model 3, but I had plenty more leg and headroom in the Model Y as a driver. The ride is also not as bumpy as I thought it might be on the 20 inch wheels. I couldn't really tell any difference from the ride on my Model 3's 18 inch wheels. However, if you want the most comfortable ride, you gotta go with a more expensive Model S or X due to their smart air suspension, which the Model Y does not have. But all in all, the Model Y is extremely comfortable and enjoyable to drive. The road noise and cabin noise while driving at highway speeds are similar to my Model 3 in that it's a little louder than I would expect, but it's definitely no louder than any of its internal combustion engine vehicle competitors. 
Now the minimalist dash with the full length wood veneer along with the same steering wheel controls and the same exact touchscreen as the Model 3, I'm a huge fan of. You never realize how many useless buttons most cars have until you experience the simple modern design that's in a Model Y. It's like when everyone moved from a flip phone to a smartphone, a dynamic touchscreen display that replaces unnecessary knobs and buttons. That's what Tesla has embraced and it's exactly what I want in a car. Almost everything is controlled by the touchscreen, even opening the glove box. But the steering wheel also includes two versatile scroll wheel buttons that can be pressed in, pressed to the left and right, and of course scrolled up and down to give you quick common controls at your fingertips without having to touch the screen. Now some people are turned off by having most of the controls on the touchscreen, but once you get a feel of the layout, it's very intuitive and easy to use. Although the Model Y seems to have a better blind spot view through the back windows compared to the Model 3, I still wish Tesla would provide a better blind spot detection system. The Model Y lacks the side mirror light alerts that most other new cars have. The main way to get alerted about objects in your blind spot is from the touchscreen, which shows a visualization of a car in the lane, or you just have to do it the old school way and look over your shoulder. Now I have a recommendation for an easy fix for the blind spot detection that Tesla could implement via a free software update. And I've mentioned this in a previous video, but uh, I wish that if whenever you uh, initiate the turn signal, uh, I wish the camera feeds from the side cameras would pop up on the screen showing you uh, the lane, your blind spot. So if you're, you're initiating the left turn signal, uh, the left side camera feed would pop up on the screen, giving you a clear view of, the, of your blind spot. I think that would be an easy fix. And I think that Tesla will release that in the future. Another complaint from a driver's point of view in the Model Y is the extremely narrow view out of the rear view mirror. Now, this was my wife's biggest pet peeve of the Model Y. It's almost useless and due to the tint, when you're wearing sunglasses, the view is super dark as well as narrow. This is the compromise Tesla had to make by moving the crossbar further back to allow for that expansive glass roof. Do you think it's worth it? Are you team glass roof or are you team rear view mirror? The good news is that the Model Y has a fantastic backup camera that gives you a great view of the rear when you pull it up on the display, which is definitely helpful because of the poor rear view mirror visibility. Model Y also has 12 ultrasonic sensors that alert when an object is getting too close. And that brings us to one of the best features of owning any Tesla, including the Model Y, which is the software and autopilot. I think it's safe to say Tesla's biggest advantages and what makes them so good at making these electric cars is first their battery and supercharger technology, but also the software. Tesla excels in these categories. The reason Model 3 and Model Y are so software focused is because at some point, Tesla plans to make their cars capable of driving themselves without any human. And when this happens, software will be the best way to go forward with full self-driving and the robo taxi service, which I did a video about and I'll link to at the end of this video. Having a car that is designed around a touchscreen means they can constantly update it and make it better. That's exactly what they do. The Model Y automatically downloads free software updates from Tesla as they release them and these updates are constantly providing new features and catering to the customer's needs. For example, a few months ago, I did a video about some of the things I hate about my Model 3, most of which were things that could easily be fixed through a software update. And lo and behold, last week, Tesla released a free software update to all Tesla owners that addressed many of my complaints. Now that is something you cannot get with any other car. Some of the main Model Y software features include things like the built-in navigation system, which is amazingly helpful, the ability to control the fan direction and climate control all from the touchscreen, which is brilliant in my opinion, custom driver profiles that save certain settings so if you share your car with someone else, you can both have your own profile that automatically adjusts your settings as you enter the car based on whose smartphone it detects as the key. It even has dog mode, which keeps the car at a cool temperature and displays a message on the display, alerting concerned citizens that the dog is happy and cool and the owner will return soon. Now the dual motor Model Ys come with one year of free premium connectivity, which includes features like a built-in internet web browser that lets you browse sites even if the car is driven, which is good for passengers, satellite maps with live traffic visualization, built-in streaming services such as Slacker for internet radio, Spotify for streaming your own saved music, and TuneIn for podcasts. It also has video streaming apps including Netflix and YouTube, which is actually really clutch during supercharging on road trips. And since Elon has said their mission is to make Teslas the most fun cars on the planet, there are also built-in games and things like karaoke. Now those are all great, but I have some minor complaints. First, I would love to have an option for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, but I doubt that will ever happen. Also, I wouldn't pay the $10 a month for premium connectivity after the trial is up. You still get live traffic data on your navigation, you just don't see the visuals of it, but the route will still be the same. And my main music app of choice is Spotify, and Tesla's built-in Spotify app is half-baked at best. It's very buggy, so I just end up streaming 
Spotify and podcasts from my phone via Bluetooth most of the time. Now the good thing about that is the left scroll wheel on the steering wheel for playing, pausing, and skipping still works when streaming over Bluetooth from your phone. Now Model Y also features built-in voice controls that allow you to do many different things like set the temperature, open the glove box, drive to a certain destination, and more. Play Jack Harlow. Drive to Falls of the Ohio. Now these voice commands will become a huge advantage for Tesla as they get more sophisticated because right now, I guess the only downside with a touchscreen is that it does require you to look at where you're touching, which takes your eyes off the road. But that's where Tesla's best software feature comes into play. Autopilot is an advanced driver assistance system that makes driving safer and less stressful. Autopilot comes standard with all new Teslas and utilizes the eight external cameras, the forward facing radar, the 12 ultrasonic sensors, and the onboard computer to give you two main features while driving. Traffic aware cruise control, which matches the speed of your car to that of the surrounding traffic, and auto steer, which assists in steering within a clearly marked lane and utilizes traffic aware cruise control. Now, the optional full self driving option gives you more features, but it is quite expensive. I I have FSD on my Model 3 and I'll link to a video I did showcasing it on my 45 minute commute. But having driven the Model Y that just has basic autopilot, it was honestly enough for the majority of my driving. Autopilot can be enabled by double tapping down on the right stalk when you're within marked lanes. Now this will initiate auto steer and traffic aware cruise control so the car will stay within the lane, maintain speed while also slowing down for the lead car and speeding back up when necessary. And you can easily increase or decrease the set speed or follow distance by using the right scroll wheel on the steering wheel. Now once you experience autopilot, you will never want to go back to a non-Tesla ever again. It allows you to not expend constant mental energy to manually drive the car, but instead it gives you more awareness of your surroundings as the car handles lane keeping and speed. All it requires is a hand on the wheel to let it know you're still attentive. Now, one feature I love about FSD on my Model 3 is the automatic lane change. Now, this feature allows a Tesla with FSD to automatically change lanes on a highway to pass and merge, which is insanely useful. Autopilot doesn't have automatic lane change, and I thought I would miss it dearly when using basic autopilot on the Model Y, but Tesla designed autopilot in a way that is very clever and made me not miss FSD as much, especially when changing lanes. For example, when autopilot is enabled, you can disengage and take over by doing either of these three things, pressing the brake, tapping up on the right stalk, or turning the wheel with enough force. And when you disengage autopilot by turning the wheel, it takes a good amount of force. However, when you first initiate a turn signal when autopilot is engaged, it actually lessens the required force for the steering wheel, allowing you to easily change lanes. Then it quickly lets you re-engage autopilot when most of your car is in the new lane. I didn't know it was set up like this and it was really impressive even coming from my Model 3 with FSD. So given that and the level at which I trust autopilot because it is the best advanced driver assistance system on any car right now, in my opinion, I think the included autopilot feature set is enough for most people. It's mostly useful for highway driving right now. If you do choose FSD, you will get some cool features like summon and auto park, but those I rarely ever use in my Model 3. Once FSD improves in the coming future to where it's usable on city streets, then it will separate itself from basic autopilot. But until then, autopilot should meet most drivers' needs. And it obviously enhances quite possibly the best feature of owning a Tesla that people seem to always forget about, including myself, safety. Now, Autopilot has proven to be a safer way to drive when it's used properly. That's because software doesn't suffer from human error. Software doesn't get road rage. It doesn't fall asleep at the wheel. It doesn't get distracted. And like every Tesla, the Model Y is designed to be the safest vehicle in its class. It has a low center of gravity, a rigid body structure, and large crumple zones that provide unmatched protection. Now, even after all the cool things about the Model Y, most people would benefit from choosing a Model Y just on safety alone, which is something to think about. Another safety and security feature that is unique to Tesla is the dash cam feature, which allows you to connect a flash drive to the USB port under the center console area, and it will record continuous dash cam footage from all the external cameras while driving, which is extremely helpful if you're ever in a situation where something happens to your car. It also can record surveillance footage while the car is parked, and this feature is called sentry mode. It's extremely helpful for monitoring your car for security reasons, and the best part is Tesla's latest software update lets you view the dash cam footage directly from the touchscreen and even skip ahead to the point where motion is detected. 
Now, the Model Y has been criticized by many of suffering from fit and finish issues. And this Model Y definitely has a few of those issues, including one of the hatchback's interior side paneling is misaligned, which is revealing the inner components. Part of the upholstery uh, interior is sticking out, which was an eyesore. And the passenger window makes a popping noise when it's rolled up. However, those are pretty minor issues that should be easily fixed by Tesla's mobile technician and covered under the new vehicle warranty. Now, the exterior of the Model Y was actually great. I couldn't find really any panel gaps or misalignments that were noticeable. Now, it's probably safe to say Tesla is not the best at fit and finish, but most of the fit and finish issues that some Model Y owners have seen are minor cosmetic issues that will most likely get fixed for free and not cause any inconvenience due to the service being performed by a mobile technician at the owner's location. I hope Tesla will try to improve their fit and finish quality going forward, but I think most people will be head over heels in love with the most important parts of the car. Now, the Tesla Model Y brings a lot to the table. It has an attractive design and provides the best things about the Model 3 with even more space at an elevated view while being much more affordable than Tesla's only other SUV, the Model X. The Model Y is pretty much the only option for people who want a fully electric hatchback with at least 300 miles of range, along with the high level of performance and quickness. It's packed full of capable self-driving technology, and the feature set is constantly improving via free over-the-air software updates. The hardware and software are optimized to integrate together seamlessly for a top-notch user experience. The newly introduced powered liftgate hatchback makes the Model Y extremely versatile and great for families. The feeling of never buying gas or oil again is the cherry on top. If you plan to own for a long period of time, Model Y could lead to some big fuel savings with the possibility of the sun charging your car via solar energy, which is the ultimate goal. After owning a Tesla for over two years now, it's so hard for me to recommend any gasoline vehicle or even a hybrid, even though there are some promising upcoming options like the Toyota RAV4 Prime that are cheaper than the Model Y. I definitely wouldn't recommend depleting your savings or going into considerable debt to get any new vehicle. But if you have a $50,000 budget, the Tesla Model Y may very well be the best car option on the market right now. So that was my review of the Tesla Model Y. What do you think of the car? Do you like it? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Are you getting one? Do you have one? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to see more Tesla and tech videos in the future. My name is Andy. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you in the next one.